Hello there and welcome. If I sound a bit echoey, it's because I am in a cupboard pretty much. Now, in this video, we are talking about refugiums. As you may know, if you watch my channel, I'm a great fan of macroalgae and everything to do with planted marine aquariums. And refugiums fit that bill very nicely. Now, lots of people use refugiums, but there is also a lot of confusion as to why you should use them, how you should use them, how do you actually run them, and what's the benefit of using a refugium over just setting up a phosphate and nitrate reactor and a skimmer and things like that. So firstly, I'll just point out the fact that I believe that there are probably two types of refugium that you're commonly going to see. There's this kind of refugium, which is actually um, doing what it sounds like. So refugium is basically a place, a refuge, where things can grow and survive. And that's what this one is. It's full of Calerpa prolifera, and it's got a nice deep sand bed, and it's growing the algae, and it's allowing things like turbo snails to grow and breed. It's allowing things like mysis and copiapods to breed. I think you can probably see um, the water is alive, hopefully. It's full of mysis, it's full of copiapods. There's a seahorse living in there. I don't feed this seahorse, it's just living off what it can find in this refugium. So that's the first kind of refugium. And this is the second kind of refugium. This is more for literally growing algae to remove nitrates and phosphates. I've already removed a little chunk here so you can see um, the layer of algae that's growing in here. So why would you use the refugium? So the first point and the first reason for using refugiums over nitrate and phosphate removers is actually just to replace the nitrate and phosphate removers. The main job of a refugium is to remove nitrate and phosphate. The idea is you grow your algae, and now lots of people use Cheeto, but in this case I'm using um, Calerpa braticus and Calerpa lentilifera. It doesn't matter, as long as the algae is growing, it's removing nitrates and phosphates from the water. So the basis is, as this grows, your water's getting cleaner. When it overgrows, you remove the algae, and you're essentially exporting nutrients from your aquarium. And it's actually called nutrient export, funnily enough. So that's why you would want to do this. It's a natural way of removing those waste elements from your aquarium. Now, why is it actually better than using a nitrate and phosphate reactor? Well, firstly, cost. Because the resins that you put into nitrate and phosphate removers cost money. The reactors themselves cost money. And so this is a more natural and cheaper way of doing the same job. Now, secondly, nitrate and phosphate reactors don't promote good things. So you can see here, there's a small um, amphipod, and that will actually act as a food for some of your fish. So if you've got things like mandarins or any picky feeders, scooter blennies, um, even seahorse, that little chap will be a fine meal for him. And what happens is he'll get washed down here, end up in your return pump, go into your main aquarium and be a snack for one of your fish. So there are quite a few natural benefits to actually running a refugium rather than your reactors. When it comes to these kind of refugiums where you're actually using them as a refugium as well, they do the same job as the other types. So this Calerpa prolifera as it grows will be removing nitrates and phosphates and you will need to take some of it out every now and then and give it a weed and do your nutrient export. But this kind of refugium is slightly special in the fact that you also use it to put more picky fish in. So in this case, I'm keeping seahorse. But if you've got, say, a mandarin that is struggling to feed in your main aquarium, you can pop him in here and he'll be more than happy and put on a bit of weight via the natural amphipods, mysis and copepods that are available in this environment. And I personally prefer this kind of refugium because it actually is a tiny little tank within your system which you can grow some lovely macroalgae in here uh, and really enjoy a different environment to your main tank. Actually running a, a refugium is really simple. Both types require the same thing. You need a light and in this case and in the other case in fact I'm using the Fluval Aquasky. I found them to be really good refugium lights. I mean they're quite cheap, um, they're very robust 
and they're on 24 hours a day and they definitely grow macro algae. Um, I mean this particular refugium started off as a single stolen of this algae with probably two to three leaves on and within let's say two months we've turned into this. So the Fleaval Aquasky is an essential part of your refugium kit and because they're so small they can fit onto most sumps. Other than lighting you need good flow. So this one has great flow because the entire system actually flows through it. We come down here, it goes under a weir plate um, and then it goes through all of this lovely algae and returns to the aquarium up there. Every milliliter of water runs through this refugium uh, and gets filtered by this algae in a natural way. But that's really it in terms of uh, running a refugium, it's really simple. Create a space for it, get a light, add some algae and away you go. One thing I will tell you though is if your algae is actually growing in a white colour, it's normally because you need to feed it. Now I see a lot of people who are growing Cheeto in refugiums and their Cheeto actually looks sick. It goes a white colour and then they wonder why it's not taking out the nitrates and phosphates. That's because it still needs the other elements in the water to grow and a lot of the time it's iron. So if you are running a refugium I suggest you put a little bit of iron into your aquarium and that is the same kind of iron that you would put into a freshwater aquarium to fertilize your plants and it's widely available throughout the internet. It's just a simple plant iron fertilizer and that will make your Cheeto or other macroalgae go a bright green again and start to remove the nitrates and phosphates. So thank you for watching, I hope this video has been interesting. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this kind of content. Once again thanks for watching and happy fish keeping!